Beach Means to Me, 1998, Dr. Joseph A. Bagnall, Adjunct in History at Palomar College in 1998. I was 68 years old at the time. I served at Palomar from 1998 to 2016. I retired in 2016 at the age of 86. I am now 93 years old and I will do my best to uh, narrate this program for you. I was hired as an adjunct in history at Palomar in 1998. I was given a 60% teaching load and assigned primarily to the college satellite at Camp Pendleton. My students were Marines, naval personnel, and their spouses, and a significant number of civilians who drove to the base for my class. I spent 18 wonderful years on base, but I also taught a few classes at our Escondido satellite and on our main San Marcos campus. Adult motivation. The maturity of my students at Camp Pendleton made my teaching pleasurable. Marines and Navy personnel came to my three-hour lectures in the evening after dealing with the rigorous daytime challenges of military life. They arrived with high purpose and concrete goals, and they worked hard to complete the requirements for their college degrees. One of the very best was Keith Ty. I knew him as a non-commissioned officer. Today, he serves as Major Keith Ty in the U.S. Marine Corps. Civilian Success My civilian classes had many students that were unsettled and unfocused, but there were many serious students among them as well. One of the best was Nozomi Ayagi, a Japanese foreign exchange student who had to learn English as well as the regular subject matter. Today, Nozomi is a practicing dentist. <laughs> Professionals everywhere. I had the pleasure of working at Palomar under the following chairpersons of the Department of Economics, History, and Political Science. Most recently, it was Teresa Laughlin, then Chris Johnson. Next was Jose Esteban, and then my first chairperson, was Mary Ann Drynan. Each of these leaders handled their responsibilities with dignity, professionalism, and high competence, and each was a pleasure to know. At the satellites, as well, my supervisor at Camp Pendleton was Janet Hoffman. And at the Escondido satellite, it was Norma Miyamoto. Their work was equally impressive, and the morale was always high at their respective stations. Collegiality at Palomar. During my 18 years at Palomar, the economics, history, and political science department had a collegial atmosphere. 
There were department parties at Bill Chanel's fine home, or at a restaurant in San Marcos, or at the college itself. Colleagues at Palomar enjoyed one another, and it was a happy time whenever we got together. Beauty and opportunities everywhere. The stately buildings on our San Marcos campus convey an atmosphere of great dignity. Our campus looks more like a modern university than a community college. Palomar College has an incredible range of class offerings with over 250 degree and certificate programs. It would take days to describe the plethora of career pathways that are available to our Palomar students. Sample Pathways. We have a strong transfer program with ties to our Universities of California and the California State University system. We offer an outstanding child development program under the direction of Dr. Laurel Anderson, Melinda Finn, our public affairs official, is an excellent professor of photography. We offer registered nursing and LVN degrees, dental programs, and paramedic programs. We have a program in fire science. We have a police academy, an arboretum, a program in astronomy, programs in performing arts, and fine arts, a myriad of computer programs, and many, many more. The Palomar Planetarium. We have an on-campus astronomical observatory. It is the fifth largest observatory in California and we are famous for it. That is why our sports teams are called Comets and our student newspaper is called The Telescope. Palomar Pride. We are proud of the updated modern architecture of our Palomar Planetarium. We are proud of the enormous way our planetarium enhances our astronomy program and the way it extends our outreach to visiting school children. Palomar College Television. We also have an award-winning television station. On June 16, 2018, our Palomar College TV staff, namely Luke Bisania, Mona Urban, Bill Wisniewski, and Curtis Garris, attended the Emmy Award ceremony and brought home 10 Emmy Awards for Palomar College TV. How many colleges and universities have done that? Pat Hahn. Actually, Emmy Awards have become a habit for Palomar College TV. Since 1976, when the legendary Pat Hahn was hired to oversee digital broadcasting, our television station has won 58 Emmy Awards. Planning a unique learning experience. In the fall semester of 2006, 
I told my History 102 class in Escondido that World War II pilots met for breakfast every Wednesday morning at a Denny's restaurant in Oceanside. Then I asked them if they would like to dine with the pilots and listen to their war experiences in place of one class session on World War II. When they all enthusiastically answered yes, I promised them that I would try to get this special field trip proposal approved by the college, the restaurant management, and the pilots themselves. The logistics of the trip. After it was all arranged, students drove individually from the Escondido area to the Oceanside restaurant and each bought their own breakfast. There were about 60 students and pilots at our breakfast and our students were richly rewarded for their effort. Publicity for our trip. On Monday, November 6th, 2006, our student newspaper, The Telescope, carried a half-page story with a banner headline, Students Learn from War Veteran Pilots. The story was accompanied with a picture of about six of our students huddled around a pilot at one of the many tables. Not only was our trip covered by the telescope, but both the professor and students were praised on the editorial page of the North County Times. Working with Pat Hahn and Palomar College TV. At this juncture, Pat Hahn and I were both highly motivated to make a television documentary featuring some of the World War II pilots that my students had spoken with. Pat immediately involved his television class in the production of our program. He also chose John Bobasoro as our narrator and made arrangements to use the KOCT, Oceanside Community TV recording studio. My part, I was responsible for choosing four pilot participants and making certain that they were all in our recording studio at the appointed time. Unfortunately, I do not have pictures of the pilot participants, so you must see our finished production titled Heroes of the Greatest Generation in order to see the pilots. But here are their names and pictures of the airplanes they flew. The participants on our program Bud Miller was a P-38 Lightning fighter pilot who flew 53 missions. Rod Braswell was a B-17 Flying Fortress bomber pilot who flew 50 missions. Norm Aiken was a P-51 Mustang fighter pilot who was shot down, became a prisoner of war, and escaped. Bill Ryherd was a B-26 twin-engine bomber pilot who flew on D-Day and was shot down on his 36th mission. 
and he became a prisoner of war. Heroes of the Greatest Generation Tom Brokaw, former anchor for NBC News, has popularized the idea that the generation that survived the Great Depression and won World War II was America's greatest generation. We therefore titled our documentary, Heroes of the Greatest Generation, Pilots of World War II. Death has still the voices of our four heroes, but we still have our precious footage of each one sharing his war experience. Where can you see this footage? In times past, both Palomar College TV and KOCT Oceanside Community Television have aired Heroes of the Greatest Generation. Air dates have been either on Veterans Day or Memorial Day. Perhaps our footage is still in their archives and is available for viewing. If not, the program can still be viewed in its entirety on Joseph A. Bagnall's YouTube channel. Palomar College sports achievements since our founding in 1946. Coach Tom Kraft. Tom Kraft, Palomar College football coach, holds our school record for most football wins. He won 115 games and lost 56. He also won Palomar's national titles in community college football in 1991, 1993, and 1998. Coach Mildred Ayers' Palomar archery team won the national championship in 1966 and 1967. Coach Ayers also won the state championship in co-ed bowling in 1971 and 1972. Palomar College sports achievements since our founding in 1946. National championships, as already mentioned, we've won the national football title three times and the archery title twice. State championships, in wrestling, seven, in football, three, in softball, three, in women's tennis, three, in co-ed bowling, two, in men's archery, one, in women's archery, one, in men's cross country, one, in men's track and field, one. State regional championships. We have won in softball 18 times, in baseball four times, in football four times, in men's golf twice, and then conference championships. In softball, 27 times. Women's tennis, 12. Football, 12 times. Men's basketball, 10 times. Women's swimming, 10. Baseball, 9. Men's golf, 
five. Men's water polo, five. Women's basketball, five. Men's tennis, four. Archery, three. Women's soccer, three. Women's volleyball, three. Men's swimming, two. Women's water polo, two. Men's volleyball, one. Career opportunities for our student athletes. Palomar College offers today's student athlete a wide variety of options. Palomar men can choose to participate in basketball, football, baseball, soccer, track and field, swimming and diving, water polo, volleyball, and wrestling. Palomar women may compete in basketball, beach volleyball, soccer, softball, swimming and diving, track and field, volleyball, and water polo. KKSM, Palomar College Radio. We have KKSM, Palomar College Radio. It is on the air 24-7. It has a 500-watt output and is located at 1320 a.m. on your radio dial. The KKSM signal reaches San Juan Capistrano in the north, La Jolla in the south, the I-15 freeway in the east, and a few of the ships at sea near our west coast. Extending our signal. We have extended our signal beyond the boundaries established by our broadcast antenna. We also simulcast via Cox Cable Channel 957 and stream nationally via the internet. Program Control. When we say that KKSM is student operated, we mean specifically that the station has a student director, a student music director, a student sports director, and a student news director. KKSM also has Zeb Navarro as faculty advisor and station manager, and an independent contractor as our chief engineer. Program content. Our students program excellent talk shows and entertainment. They broadcast Palomar College football and some select high school games. And they have interviewed the likes of Jay Leno, and comic George Carlin, as well as governors and congressmen. KKSM Awards. When we say that KKSM is an award-winning radio station, we mean specifically that in 2013, the intercollegiate broadcasting system gave KKSM the Golden Microphone Award and named it the best community college radio station in the nation. In 2015, the College Media Association named us Radio Station of the Year with the best newscast. personal award 
at KKSM. Zeb Navarro, station manager at KKSM, allowed me, as a faculty member, to participate at KKSM on a volunteer basis. I hosted a one-hour weekly jazz show titled Doc's Jazz, and it lasted for 11 weeks. Without my knowledge, Zeb submitted one of my recorded programs to the Intercollegiate Broadcast System for their end of the year awards. I was happily surprised when it was announced in New York that I won the first place trophy in the volunteer category. The Distinguished Faculty Award. After an early retirement from full-time teaching and a 12-year stint as an assistant dean at Santa Barbara City College, I spent 18 wonderful years as an adjunct in history at Palomar College. I retired in 2016 at the age of 86 and was presented the Distinguished Faculty Award. The Camp Pendleton Experience. The year was 2016 and the month was December, just before Christmas. I was teaching my last class at Camp Pendleton, and for that matter, the last class of my life. After the last student had finished his final and left the room, I began to erase the whiteboard. All of a sudden, the door opened and the class began pouring back into the room. When the class reassembled, one student came to the front and handed me this handsome cherry wood plaque. It was baffling to me that they were able to uncover every teaching assignment I had in my 61 years as an educator. As you can see, they have listed them all. This plaque represents a grassroots level award that means more to me than I can express in words. They also gave me a handsome dinner jacket and a few smaller gifts. Then there were hugs and goodbyes and it was all done. A professional among professionals. There may have been pockets of acrimony, pettiness, and discord at Palomar, but I never observed them, nor did I ever experience them. At Palomar, I always felt like a functioning professional among professionals. Thank you, Palomar College, for honoring my work. Working with the best, my experience in community colleges is quite extensive. I taught history as an adjunct at Monterey Peninsula College from 1959 to 1961. I taught history full time at Fullerton College from 1964 to 1970. I observed Santa Barbara City College classes up close as an assistant dean from 1970 to 1982. I taught history as an adjunct at Miracosta College from 1985 to 1998. And as I have already indicated, I finished my teaching career as an adjunct in history at Palomar 
from 1998 to 2016. Palomar. All of these community colleges are widely recognized as excellent. But in terms of degrees and certificates offered, opportunities to excel, the quality of the student population, administrative support, collegiality, and overall commitment to professional standards, I give Palomar College the highest marks and the contest isn't close.